I am so excited to spend the day in Chester, a city with a diverse history dating back to Roman times. Chester has the most complete city walls, the oldest race course, and the largest Roman amphitheater in Britain, and so much more. We're gonna be taking in as much of this unique city as we can uh, today. We've got the day, but we're starting here with the Chester Rose. Our Airbnb is right on Eastgate Street, and when we got in last night, I was just blown away with how incredibly unique and beautiful this street is. The half-timbered buildings are probably the most iconic part of Chester, but I think what makes it so unique and interesting is that the, the street is built up. Like, there's a second story of shops, and uh, there's these undercrofts underneath. I guess nobody really knows exactly why they built this like this, but it is so different and unlike anything I've ever seen before. It's really neat. The Eastgate clock was built to commemorate Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee and is supposedly the second most photographed clock in the UK after, of course, the mighty Big Ben. It certainly is lovely and a great photo spot. I can see why it is the second most photographed clock in the UK. We are now actually also on the city wall. This is the East Gate, hence the name East Gate Street and East Gate Clock. Chester having the most complete city walls, you can pretty much make a loop around the entire city, which is lovely because look at these views. It is just like the perfect place to take in the sights of Chester. Oh, it's so beautiful. I can see the Roman gardens down there. Oh, and there's the Roman amphitheater. <laughs> I like how logical the planning was here. Yeah. This is Newgate, the newest of the, the newest. Gates. I love that there's a place down there called Bougie. Might be a little too fancy for me. Maybe. Oh man, I do love that this neat, old-timey, half-timbered building has a dentist in it. Dental work is not a pleasure. No. It would be pleasurable to have it in that building. Would it though? <laughs> Maybe not. These are the mid-17th century alms houses known as the Nine Houses. Only six remain, as you can see. They're pretty neat. It's just like Meatloaf says, six out of nine ain't bad. I'm not sure that's what Meatloaf said. It's the same math, right? Sure. It's the same fraction. It's fine. It counts. No, it's still... Oh, yeah. wait. Yeah, it is. Never mind. You're right. <laughs> oh, wow. This is so neat. Beautiful. It's really pretty. So the Roman gardens here, none of the artifacts were actually found at this site. They basically collected everything that they've found, you know, over centuries and displayed them here in a beautiful garden area. Which, if you ask me, I think this is just as wonderful as if the Romans had actually used this as a gardens themselves. Like, it's just amazing that they've collected all of these things and made beautiful art out of it. There's a school trip happening, and those school children are learning about Roman formations in battle, which I just think is amazing <laughs> to actually be here in a place that's historically significant to Roman. Roman? <laughs> Rome? <laughs> Romans? <laughs> I just am curious, where is a place that you went on a school field trip to that was really mind-blowing? Like, tell me about that. I want to know about it because in the United States, I feel like we went to, I don't know, the zoo or something. Like it wasn't super exciting. Oh, we got to go once to a, a living history farm and learn about how um, people made butter and stuff. I don't know. That wasn't probably as exciting as things that you could do in England. What was your favorite school field trip? I mean, I guess it was probably the zoo or something. I just remembered one of the very first school field trips I took, we took the public transportation, the Max, in Portland. And I remember telling my mom, like, Mom, we took the train or whatever it was. It's like a light rail. Yeah, a light rail. 
we took the Max, and I was very excited about that. I don't even know, I think we took it to like a Christmas market or something. I don't even know what we did. That was the highlight of the trip for me though. <laughs> but you know what we didn't do? What? Learn about Roman history in a place that it was significant. Yeah, where Roman stuff actually happened. <laughs> Chester has so many things that make it unique. And one of those things is the Roman Amphitheater, which is the largest Roman amphitheater in all of Britain and it dates back to 70 AD. In its time, it was used for things like training and sports and even public executions. I read that at the time that they were using it, it could hold 6,000 people, which could you just imagine? This is, you know, just a, a little piece of what is left, but could you imagine how grand and epic it must have been that it could hold that many people? It is neat to see the new gate behind it though. Just all of Chester built up around this, you know, historic piece of architecture. I'm assuming these are tool marks on these uh, stones. It's just incredible. Like these were put here 2000 years ago or, or almost 2000 years ago. Column fragment is an original part of an official box above. So this is where someone would have been sitting and viewing from a very high place. You know what I want to reenact here? What? that Pepsi commercial that has like Britney Spears and Pink and Enrique Iglesias. We will, we oh. will rock you. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's epic. I think it has Maya in it. Mm, Maya was a Coke person. Are you sure? Oh, you might be right. Or was it a Coke product? I think it was Britney Pepsi. Britney was a Pepsi girl. You're right. I can't think of a better soundtrack than the Pepsi commercial, We Will Rock You, that I'm pretty sure this is like a Roman battle, right? This is like what they were doing here. They were going... <laughs> oh my gosh. I just really wanted to reenact that, but Jeremy just made fun of me. <laughs> Ooh yeah. That's my Brittany. It's pretty epic as it is, but could you imagine this built up to be, you know, 6,000 seats? So now that I have appreciated Roman history and Pepsi commercials in the late 90s, early 2000s, I think it's time for a boat ride. We decided to take a little half hour boat cruise of the city. It's run by Chester Boats, which is a family operated boat company that has been doing this for 40 years, going up and down the Dee River, showing people a good time. So let's go do it. Let's go have ourselves a good time. The audio guide was just telling us that this patch of land used to have executions on it, and because of that, they're probably never going to build anything on it. That was really nice. It had like an audio guide telling you what was going on on the right and left sides and telling you some history about the housing and areas around it and just kind of relaxing. I would recommend it. I think you can actually save a little bit of money booking them online. Uh, Jeremy got our tickets last night. I think it was like 15 pound 30. And then if you paid today in person, it was 17 pounds. So if you book ahead, you can save a little bit of money. Queen's Park Suspension Bridge is a footbridge that connects the Queen's Park neighborhood, which I'm pretty sure is like a posh area of town with uh, the groves here in Chester. It has lovely views and it's uh, not, not too rough for being a suspension bridge. One of the things I love about Chester is that it's all just so walkable and explorable. Like there are so many neat areas to just wander around. Like there's the groves, there's Grosvenor Park, there's the like Roman amphitheater and the Roman gardens. There's just so much stuff so close and it's all just really amazing to take in. 
didn't realize that Grosvenor Park had so many neat arches in it. Like this one right here. This one is from the west door of the old St. Michael's Church. Oh, that's so amazing. So that uh, over there, I'm assuming, is a different door that you can see through the arch. How neat. These are the eastern ruins of the Church of St. John the Baptist. This church dates back over 900 years and was the main place of worship before the Chester Cathedral in 1092. But probably my favorite little weird thing is that there's a coffin in the wall over there. It says dust to dust. So strange, so cool. Yeah, weird, but interesting. Just look at how the moss and nature has reclaimed this structure. It's beautiful. I guess they're not really sure about the coffin and its situation. I feel like a lot of things in Chester, they just don't know. But I guess they think it might have been a monk. I did notice, did you hear when we were in there that there were people talking about their spooky stories in there? I wasn't totally paying attention to them, yeah. Yeah, apparently it's pretty haunted here too. Which, that makes sense. There's all kinds of ghost tours and stuff in Chester. Navigating the walls can be a bit confusing, but we've made it to our lunch spot, the Albion Inn. It says they have famous food and famous beer, wine, and spirits. Famously atmospheric. Oh, it's recognized nationally and internationally for its unique atmosphere. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but we're about to find out. I'm not sure if I can go. <laughs> This is really cool. It feels like a local's hangout. Our food has just arrived. Jeremy got the minced beef cottage pie. And I have a chickpea curry. They both smell wonderful. Yeah, that's really good. I'm excited for you to try yours. Mm. Oh, it's a really nice curry. There are like layers of flavors happening. Ooh, it's really hot and has some spiciness to it too. Both kinds of heat. <laughs> Mine is really good, but Jeremy's is amazing. He did mention when we were ordering it at the bar that it was the locals' favorite, and I can see why. It is really, really good. You should definitely try this if you come here. That was really good food, just good vibes in general. We came back up to the wall. It is a little bit chillier than it was, a little bit windier than it was earlier, but we we're gonna head uh, and, and just walk the wall for a while. When you're in the city with the most complete wall, you gotta walk it. You gotta keep walking that wall. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading that this little outcropping here was actually a watchtower in medieval times for the crossing here. Wales is it's just over, over that way yonder, according to this sign here. This gate up here that we are about to cross is very appropriately named Bridge Gate. This big castle-like structure must be Chester Castle, or what's left of it. The sign here says it dates back to 1070. Now, I do believe it is part of the English heritage, but I don't think that it's open right now. Here's a picture of what it would have looked like here on the River Dee. In a sea of yellows and changing fall colors, it is so green. Very green. <laughs> Established in 1539, the Chester Racecourse is recognized as the oldest still operating racecourse in the entire world. And it gets weirder than that. <laughs> there is a story that there's a cross on a mountain in the middle of the track there that a statue of the Virgin Mary is buried because the statue fell on a woman and killed her and the statue was sentenced to death. Since they couldn't hang her or anything like that, they just buried the statue out here. And it's also said that it might be the case of the first time that there was a trial by 12 jurors as well. So weird story, don't know if it's true. <laughs> 
while I'm not sure that that legend is true, a couple fascinating facts about this place is that before it became a race course, there was actually a football match here known as Shrove Tuesday, I believe. It was a very famously bloody football match that took place here. And even before that, it used to be underwater. Basically, the Dee River has kind of changed course. It's gotten a little bit further away from the city. This all used to be underwater at one point in time. I think during the Roman times. Well, I think we've done a decent section of the walled part. Ready to go back and look at more of the row houses? Yeah, let's go do it. into a place called Beer Heroes. They have all kinds of fun beers on tap. I got a sour that is a coquito sour. It is the strangest beer. It is like half like a fruity sour and then half just tastes like cookie dough, but it's really good. I like that this is like a beer tunnel. Well, what happened is an accident. We just kind of wandered in there. Uh, they had an amazing selection and uh, just really cool place to check out. So I'm glad we stopped in there. It's uh, feeling a little bit like it could rain soon, although it is nice right now. The architecture here is just so beautiful. Like, look at this one. It has such intricate detail. That sign up there says 1652. We haven't gone to a proper visit of the Chester Rose without going up to the second level of one of these. That's fair, yeah. Let's go up that one. Okay. Have you ever seen anything like it? Like there's a whole nether row of shops and they're up, up above street level, like set back. Yeah, it's really interesting. It's like an interesting mixture of, there are like apartments and stuff up here too, but shops that are, yeah, like five feet back and 10 feet higher than the other one. It's really weird. that they also say things like this one says to God my king and my country this place is enticing me with their their taunt of come and see our Roman remains inside what do you think they are I don't know I don't know but it seems like they're closing There's just so much amazing architecture to look at. It's just all so intricate and beautiful. I could literally spend hours here just looking at these half timbered buildings. It's beautiful. We have come full circle. We are back to where we started and we're back at our Airbnb. If you're interested in booking this Airbnb, we will leave a link to it below. There's nothing special or amazing about it, but it's a perfectly good Airbnb in a very prime location. Anyway, thank you for coming along. Thank you to our patrons for supporting our channel. Make sure you're subscribed if you haven't yet because we have plenty more to show you here in England. And uh, tomorrow we're actually going to Wales. Spoiler alert. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.